Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Aaron Knightley. I'm super excited today because I'm back in London and I'm interviewing another awesome guest, business owner, property entrepreneur and investor. So stick around because I'm going to give you some huge value, amazing insights. So follow me. Let's get into it. So we have arrived at our first location. Follow me. Let's jump into the offices and let's get into this interview. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Aaron Knightley and today I'm very excited because I have a special guest, Z. Um, super excited to interview. We've, we've been talking sort of for a while now. I'm glad that we could put this together. So we're going to cover some awesome topics and content today and we're going to try and draw as much information from Z around the entrepreneur mindship, around property, around business and investments and just as much as we can get from Z uh, within the time that we've got. So Z, firstly, thank you so much for being a guest on my YouTube channel. I'm really excited to have you here um, and I can't wait to dive into some of these topics. So Z, if you don't mind, just that 30,000 view overview of what you do, who you are, and you know what you're actually doing at the moment. Okay, so property development um, is my core business. Started from, uh, I started working in a property agency. Uh, from there, I started my own property investment business. From there, moved into developments, developments here in the UK, developments overseas as well. Um, made various investments outside of the property space, so startups, a few startups I've invested in. I've actually got my own startup as well within the tech space. So yeah, just, just keeping busy. Doing everything, cool. Yeah, yeah. So what I really like about you, Z, and what I want to share with the audience that are going to watch is something that I'm very big into, and that is your mindset. And I know you're huge on your health and routine, and I've watched a lot of your own content, um, which is awesome. So I want to start with this. I want to do something slightly different. And the building blocks of an entrepreneur because at the moment um, I think that word is really glammed up and everyone wants to be the entrepreneur but I think there's so much more um, starting from the beginning of actually making sure your health is good yeah. your routine that you're structured in order to progress so yeah. Yeah. to dive into your routine and what your day looks like starting from health workouts mm -hmm. what does it look like as, as an entrepreneur in Z's well, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna start uh, uh, the other way right I'm gonna start where it where it went wrong so you know, typically uh, there's there's a quality that entrepreneurs have, right? Which is that they, they, they have high levels of motivation, right? They, they want to break the norm. They want to do more. Um, and everything is like, it's a sacrifice. They give up uh, free time, leisure time, health to be successful, right? So there's a lot of giving up. And, and someone once explained this to me in a, in a great way. It's like being successful is like basically you've, everyone's got an inner child and you say to that inner child like you're going on a long journey, right? And you say to that inner child, look, sit, sit in the back, be quiet, right? Don't make too much noise, but we're going to get to this amazing place, right? It's a fun fair. Everything you want is going to be there. We're going to be having a great time, blah, blah, blah. It's a long drive. And this kid sits in the back, he's quiet, he's given up his day and he's like, right, you know, we, we, we're going to, we're going to the, the fun fair. He's sitting in the back, he's going, he's going. But that destination never comes because what you think success is today, that, that milestone changes. You, you, you very, well, not very quickly, but you reach that destination. You're like, shit, you know, this is nothing. Back then I thought this was where I wanted to be, but now that I've got here, I realize, shit, there's so much more. So like the inner child within you psychologically is sat in the back of the car saying, what the fuck, this, this drive never ending. This drive is just keeping on going. So this, this promised land of great fun that, that I sacrificed everything for is, is never getting there. And so what happens, the reason why I'm explaining this is that what happened is that I got to a stage in my career where everything was all about business, right? So I was overweight. Um, I had no routine that gave me sort of mindfulness, like nothing that gave my soul or my mind like peace. It was all about 100 miles an hour, business, business, different deals, more deals. And you, you get to a stage where you start losing motivation and your performance goes down. Your performance goes down because everything is just one channel from the minute you wake up to the minute you go to sleep, you're just on the phone, doing a deal, 
everything is all work related yeah. and you're not nurturing the other areas of your life which is like your body which is your soul which is your family um your friendships so yes to to be an entrepreneur you've got to do that that dirty graft as you say but then also there's you you've got to try and look after the other pieces of your life because if you don't they're all going to catch up on you yeah. And that what what you're striving for, you won't be able to get there. Your performance is going to go down. Your motivation is going to go down. So you've really got to try and have a 360 approach to your life. I learned that a little bit late, right? Um, and I had to go down the path of like you know being overweight and and not having you know in, lacking my other areas of life to actually realize that shit. You know what? Like I can't just be like a like a one one uh, horse race. I've got to cater to the other areas of my life to to that because that will augment my career right being strong in these other areas will make me more successful within entrepreneurship within being a business person so my recommendation to everyone would be especially with younger people starting out is yep it's great to be motivated it it's great to be willing to sacrifice and that is one of the key ingredients because when when you're starting off on your journey you're going to sacrifice good times with your friends all your friends are going to be doing something else and you're going to be like right you guys crack on i'm moving in a different direction that's all fine but you've still got to try and maintain a balance in your life don't go for a like a zero all or nothing approach maintain a balance in your life in the long run it, it will be good for you do you think because i totally agree did that answer you. your question it did and what I, what I want to touch on a couple of points you've just mentioned is that do you think people want instant gratification too quick within business money you know the entrepreneurial life they're not willing to as you said the goal starts there but when you get to that it just it continues you know when are we there yet when are we there yet effect mm. and just on that is that i think there are too many options for people at the moment where they don't know where to narrow down that's something i talk about a lot is that this avoiding fomo because everyone gets attracted to the shiny penny mm. um the, with, see the, being an the see the thing is right is that in everything in life you 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 get what you give and it's easy that's that's quite it's, it's it's very deep that is but it's quite easily said now I'll give you I'll give you a small example um, when I was at university um, and just after university that was the time when I when I had the least money right when I literally had no money whatsoever when I was just like you know surviving on at times like five pound in a, for a whole week and that is when you really want it the most so i'd be at university and i'd be like you know imagine if i had a ferrari and i was driving around uni and i would be doing this and that and i'd turn up to this venue and this bar and this night and i'd turn up in the ferrari and wow imagine how cool i would be so then you're like right i need to get that that's that's what i need to aim for that's what i need to get so you get off on that journey but what happens is that by the time you actually get that thing let's say it take, takes you five years six years seven years eight years ten years whatever it might take you by the time you get to that stage by the time you get that thing what you what you had to give to get that means that that life that you thought you would have is now irrelevant right all those people have moved on that night spot where you wanted to go and show the ferrari off is gone right even if you wanted it to be you can you can live some fake life and start trying doing it all again but that's going to be you moving backwards in life so it's a funny thing that you you might get what you want but when you get it you realize that what i had to give to get it just makes it all a bit different now now all of a sudden yeah i've got the ferrari i'm just giving an, an argument but shit i've got the insurance i've got the payments on it uh, i've got an illusion that people think who i am now i've got a lifestyle that i've got to maintain right so there's so many other things that i've got to do around it which means that i can't enjoy this in the same way that i thought i would be able to yes if on that day where you had no money and you were sat at uni somebody magically gave you a ferrari and you didn't have any responsibilities and the life that comes with it you would have enjoyed it but the reality is that when you get that there's a lot more that comes with that package That's and people don't realize what that package is that you got to take with that ferrari so that is is that not the process because um i know someone who's done very well also within the property space and one thing that's always stuck with me what they told me is don't want it overnight enjoy the process because not only will it 
it will make you the person you will end up being, mm. but you'll look back and you'll grow with it. So like you just said, if you end up getting the Ferrari overnight, you don't realise you've got to pay for the Ferrari. Yeah. Can you afford to pay for the Ferrari? Whereas if you build up and you do it slowly, and that's my motto is, is slow and steady wins the race and growing and learning as you, as you go through it. Um, do you think you turn around and you appreciate it more? Because there is so much out there at the moment, which you know I want to get across to the audience here, is that this instant gratification is is an illusion it, it it happens rarely how often does that happen that someone becomes a millionaire overnight and manages to to double and triple that that million do you see what i mean the only people who become the only people who become millionaires overnight are people who win the lottery yeah right whenever you hear a story about someone who you know cuz you hear the story when someone's made it right so you hear the story about shit this guy he did this and he made x amount of million even if it's in crypto for argument's sake but if you go and sit down with that guy right and say right so tell me you know you made 50 million and you made it within the space of 3 months how did that happen he's going to be like yeah for the last 6 years 7 years 5 years all I was doing was working in this space. So no one realizes that graph that went in to get to that moment, right? Exactly. So it's, you know, the, you only hear the glam part of the story and everyone loves to give that glam part of the story that, you know, yeah, I did this deal and I made X amount, but the five, six, 10, 20 years that went behind it, that's what was preparing him to be ready for that moment. In, in, in business, success comes when preparation meets opportunity. I had various stages throughout my life where I saw opportunities in front of me, where people that I knew were, were making hundreds of millions, right? But I couldn't, but it was happening in front of my eyes because I wasn't prepared or I wasn't in the position to take advantage of that as yet. If we think about it in sports terms, do you, do you play football? Yeah. Yeah. You do, okay. I don't play football, but I watch it so I understand a little bit, right? So for example, if you're a striker, and, and there's two strikers in the team, right? And you see that the other guy keeps getting himself in this position, gets past the ball and he scores these amazing goals, right? And you're like, I can do that same thing, right? But you need to get in the position to, for them to get the ball, right? There's no point in being like, you're on the halfway line and he's, he's next to the goal and he gets the ball. You need to get yourself in a position where you're also in the same position as him. What that means is that getting around a few defenders, tricking the defenders, and that's where all that preparation comes in, where all the hard work comes in, your training comes in, that you've managed to get yourself in the position to be ready to receive the ball. So half the game is, is being able to get yourself in that position. Are many people willing to do that? Because I think, I think that's, like you say, behind closed doors, not many people see the hard graft. And what I'm going to touch on here is that a lot of people see what they see on social media. So they will be hit with someone is portraying that they've achieved this like that. And then that almost holds people back because then they get that FOMO. They're thinking, oh, right, well, I've got to do that. And how did they do that? Instead of staying in their lane and, you know, really grinding down. And like we talked with Mark Wright about, you know, staying in that lane, get that business running and then branch out once that's made, then branch out and have a look at other things. I think... You know, what's your take on people being held back a lot actually in their life where they look around, they've been watching social media, a month has passed and they've done nothing because they've been looking at everyone else. But the thing is, that uh, I think in this day and age, um, the, the latest sexy thing to be is an entrepreneur, right? It's the cool thing to do, right? Um, but, you know, to be a successful entrepreneur, it's, it, you know, it's, it's not easy. It, it's, it's a tough, tough journey. And if you really want to learn, I think anybody who's looking at social media and looking at the guy who's, you know, got his picture in, in business class and he's flying all over the world and you think, wow, he's made it, is stop, go and pick up a book about a genuine entrepreneur, a biography and about them making it in life. Read it and you will understand the true journey. Anyone you want, not even we go on, pick five and you will see common patterns within them all. What are the common patterns? Struggles, more struggles, failure, a little bit of success, more failure, perseverance, more perseverance, more struggle, more failure than success. That's how it comes, right? And that's not just, it's not like, oh, that's just one person who had it that way. Any top successful entrepreneur will tell you the same story. It's very easy to go on social media and look successful, yeah. right? 
anybody can do that. You've got, somebody can spend, you know, somebody could be making a hundred grand a year for argument's sake, and they could show a lifestyle like they are a multi-millionaire. But behind that hundred grand a year they're making, doing whatever they might be doing at the time, there could be no substance. They're, they're spending everything they're earning in creating this lifestyle, in showing this illusion of what they've created. But in reality, one thing, one dynamic changes and that all could be over. So if you want to, you know, it, yes, entrepreneurship look sexy but it you know it comes with a lot of hard work it comes with sleepless nights comes with sacrifice it's not for everyone because you know if I, I could have been I could have chosen a journey of of working at a, a company a good company going to the top of that company and making myself you know half a million pound a year right by this stage in my career right be making half a million pound a year and when I leave the office at 5, 6, 7, 8 p.m., whatever it is, I shut off. I go home, I, I'm with my family, I'm with my kids, that's my headache and stress over. It starts again when I clock in in the morning, right? It's not my headache of the financial success of this business in the next 10 years, 15 years, the 100 employees that we've got, where will they go? How do I make sure they've got opportunities tomorrow? How do I make sure they've got opportunities in five years from now? How do I ensure their career growth? You know, it comes with everything in life, right? I think it's a law of physics, isn't it? Yeah. That, you know, every action has a reaction. That's what it is. You take on a lot of stress. You take on a lot of headache. Um, that, you know, it's not for everyone. Do you want that headache in your life? Do you want a constant, like, like a buzzing sound in your ear for the rest of your life? You know, that's what it's like, constant irritant just there. It's not, you know, you don't have to go down that path. And that's the, that's the truth. You've just explained what I would call the truth of what it's going to take and in that I think something people try or perhaps they don't do enough of and something that I'm really I'm really mindful of what I do is is rest reflecting and recovery mm -hmm. so I see a lot of people burn out I don't know if you've seen this I'm sure you have is where people get very excited wanting to be an entrepreneur they've got a fire in their belly or they want to do something and they're one very quick to, to quit their job whereas the side hustle is becoming much more popular and and perhaps a better way of going and starting a business while you've got a stream of income. But where I see people perhaps fail, and I'd, I'd, it'd be great to get your take on it, is the not resting and recovering. So people go, you know, hell to leather and they, and they attack it seven days a week. And you're looking at them and you're going, I just know you're going to burn out. Just, just chill. Go take a Saturday and a Sunday out with your family. Go to the park. Go work out and, and hit it on Monday. Do you see that a lot? And do you see a lot of people burning out where they just go for it. Look, I think like I, I I went through that myself, right? Where I was I was the person who was working 7 days a week, 16 hours a day and I did it for years on end, right? Um but it, I came to a stage where I had to rebalance everything because it's not sustainable. It's it's not good for your body, it's not good for your mind, it's not healthy. And at the end of the day, everything you're doing, you're doing it to improve your life, right? So, it, but if, if someone wants to do it and they think they need to do that for a certain time period, I think they can do it. Yeah, to launch it. To launch, if, if they're at a certain stage where they're like, look, I'm at, a, I'm at point A, I need to get to point C right now. And to do that, I've got to, you know, just put my head down and put in one, two years graft to really move it forward. And yeah, go for it. Work. Put in mm. work. Awesome. So before we move on to a slightly different topic, I want to get sort of your, your overview and a summary for those that are watching that have this spark, they want to do more, they want to make money, they want to better their life. What would be your three tips to an aspiring entrepreneur that wants to really get into it? But three tips that can get them on the right foot, you know, mindset, routine, everything like that. Okay, so first and foremost, I would say the word perseverance, write it down on your bathroom mirror, write it down on your wall, write it down at your desk, put a poster up. That is the most important quality in being successful because, you know, it, it, you, as you go throughout your career, you're going to face failure over and over and over again. And the people who are the most successful are the ones who just don't give up. Every time they fail, they learn from that failing, they grow and they come back stronger, harder, faster, more motivated. So perseverance is the most important quality you can have. Um, 
just on that, don't they say success is around the corner when you're just about to give up? So when, when, you, when you're like, I'm done, nothing's happening, no deals are happening, I'm fed up of this, that's the moment where you need to go and keep going again. Well, you know, I, I, I don't want to go into a long story, but I came to a stage in my career where uh, at first I got off to a flying start, um, then things went wrong, I ended up back at my parents' house when I was probably about early 20s, 24 years old. I then moved out and started all over again. Within three years, I'd created a business that was doing a multi-million pound turnover. Um, so, you know, I was about 27 years old. Everything's, after starting, going to zero, then I brought it all back again. Um, and then I went on a TV show, which many people know about, The, the Apprentice. And while I was on there, you know, my my executive team, my management team, they took advantage of that situation of me being completely out of the picture and disconnected. And it ultimately um, stole my business from me. And we were in a property agency business at the time. So it was all based on, you know, uh, we've sold properties for developers and we get commissions for that. And they went and, you know, polluted the developers' minds and said all sorts and made this illusion that I've disappeared. And they were all trying to call me. Obviously, I'm stuck in the show. I don't even have a phone with me. So ultimately, when I came back, um, all of my revenue that was to come, which was, you know, in, in I think at the time was best part of a million pounds. And um, that was all stolen from me. And I was then, I ended up with hundreds of thousand pounds worth of debt. Debt in terms of, you know, various business expenses we had, people we had to pay, rents, etc. So at that point, I came to a point where I started from nothing, made some good money, went back to zero, built it all back up again got to a stage where I was a multi-million pound turner only to then end up with minus hundreds of thousands. And at that point, you know, I sat down the day it all happened and the, the night and I was like, you know, basically I've got three options right now, right? First option is that I just throw the towel in. I just say, look, you know what? I'm not good enough for this. Like, I'm, I'm, I've got some great talents. Uh, I'm very motivated. I can go and work in any company within my industry and make a lot of money, make good money and live a comfortable life, right? So compromise, throw the towel in. Option two was, I can, what I can go and do is, I, I'll carry on what I'm doing, I'll go to court, pursue these guys legally, build a whole case and you know get my money back and get my business back, etc. Or option three was, draw a line under it all, just say, you know what, what's done is done and I'm going to go and do it all over again and I'm going to do it. I've learned from this. These are the mistakes that I made. I knew what mistakes I made. If I'm sat here, I'm not sat here saying, oh, everything happened to me and I made no mistakes. That's not true. I'll come on to that in a minute. I'll talk, I'll talk about mistakes in a second. But then, or the third option is that I learned from this and I say, you know what, the talent is within me. I built this business up in the first place. The people who stole this business from me all were a minimum of five years older than me, some even 10, 12 years older than me. They had to have me to create this business, to give them jobs, to then rob my idea and rob my business. And however, they justified it in their mind because everyone justifies it in their mind, right? So I said, and I can go do it again, bigger, better and stronger. And that night, you know, that, that was that turning point. And that night I made the decision that I'm going to go with option three. I'm just going to, because I was like, you can't do, there was one option of doing two and three together, that I'll start a new business and I'll pursue them legally. But for me, I thought they're mutually exclusive. You go for one or the other, because one, option two, you're choosing a path of negativity and feeling sorry for yourself. And it wasn't a, the case was, it would be a long drawn out case. A lot of the deals were in Spain and in the Czech Republic, international property we were dealing with. And it wasn't simple. I was like, what? So that is going to be a route of negativity and going into court, feeling sorry for yourself your focus and you know I, and from that day I chose option three of doing it all over again and from that point on I swear until I didn't I, my, ex, my existing businesses until I didn't take them to double of where that business was when, I, when, I, when it was stolen from me I did not even think about it once or even mention to anybody that that had happened to me wow. because I wanted to just keep that out of my mind, keep my mind positive and clean, not think, not talk about it. Only two years, I think it took me about a year and a half, two years. After that, that's when I went and said to people, by the way, this is what happened to me. That's like the life of equilibrium, like the balance. Do you, do you believe in that? I mean, I think, you know, if you keep pursuing something enough, if negative things happen, but you keep 
grinding through, eventually it's going to balance out. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. That's exactly like my analogy on business is: you don't have to be the cleverest, you don't have to be the strongest, you don't have to be the fastest, right? If if there's a tree, and the, it, say there's two trees outside, and we both get you and I both get a screwdriver, and they say, "Look, you've got to you've got to knock this tree down with these screwdrivers." And I go there, I'm like, tch, 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 pick at it a bit, walk around to the other side, pick a little bit more, do that, and I pick on different sides. I keep on moving around, trying different parts. Can is that soft? Is that soft? Nah, man, this ain't gonna work. I throw it down. I leave. You sit there for three weeks on end with that screwdriver, just chipping at the same place, same place. I might drive by three weeks later, the fucking tree's falling down. Yeah, yeah. Perseverance, it's key. It outweighs everything. Hard work exceeds talent. When talent isn't worked hard, you just got to keep going. Yeah, that. That's that's the number one thing that I will say to anybody. I think that's kind of in a way, it's also the only thing I would say to everybody is is that's what you got to do. It is. It's about not giving up. It's that persistence. So, but it br brings me on to my second tip, which actually was in part of that conversation, is responsibility. You have to take one hundred percent responsibility and accountability for your life, right? What that means is you can't blame other people for anything that happens in your life, right? You have to, you are responsible for what happens to you. Um, say, for example, you know, you and, because a lot of people have that, sorry, a lot of people have that they want to blame their friends, their parents, their teachers, they want to blame other people for shit that happens to them in their life. But ultimately, you can't control what other people do. The only thing you can control is what you do. So when I start understanding that, let's say, for example, a business deal went bad, right? And I say the other guy at the other end of the table, he was a bastard, he was a prick. He tried to fuck me over like this, 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 right? But I can never change what he's done or what he's going to do. What I can change is what I do and what rea reaction that will create. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So, for example, if you and I... Um, go for a go for a night out and we end up having an argument, right? And next day we're like, you know, you, I'm saying, you know, oh man, you know, he's, he's a this, he's a that and you're saying the same thing about me. Um, and we look at the situation, what happened? If I assess it internally, I'm like, well, you know, for example, I said this and after that, that made him feel a certain way and he said this, then I reacted with this and then it just went out of control. So, Realistically, I could have controlled what I said, which changes your reaction, which means the situation never got out of control. I can never control how you're going to react. What I can control is what I do and what reaction that causes. And when you understand that, that fundamentally in life, you cannot change anybody else. All you can change is what you will do then you're empowered. And that's what it's all about, is taking sole responsibility of whatever. And, you know, everyone's from different backgrounds, but yeah. it's about you being solely responsible for the outcome. So I love that. So amazing share there, Z. So um, I was going to ask another question, but I think I'm going to tie it into our other topic. So just for the audience now, I know that a lot of my audience um, and community and everything like that are within property and stuff like that. So I know that you're big in your property. Love to get your take on some topics here. So... Um, Z, you're in developments, investments, property, everything like that. So what I want to push back on here and get your take on is that there's a lot of educational companies, a lot of mentors, a lot of trainers. Um, there's a lot of marketing that is being done right now um, in regards to the property space, which is uh, drawing in a lot of attention in regards to people can get into property with no money. What I want to get your take on is for someone who does want to get into property, a very solid asset backed um, allocation for their investment the building blocks the, the foundation for someone wanting to get into property what's your take on it in regards to you know perhaps the marketing of you don't need any money hmm. if someone wants to get into property and they're just a normal person working a job where do they start um they start um in their neighborhood right um, I, I, to be honest, I've never, I, I don't, I've seen these sort of things, like I've seen some of this marketing, but I've never actually uh, sat down with someone or gone into a course to understand what, what they're pitching, yeah. right? I've heard about these lease, op, lease option things where, you, where you, you do a contract with someone to buy the property in the future for an agreed price, but you take control of it. I, but I don't know how it works, man, to be honest. Um, 
The, so what I would recommend is uh, start from your local area, right? A lot of people like confuse themselves saying, you know, they're, they're living in, for example, they're living in Brighton and they're like, oh, someone's told me Manchester's a great market, right? And they start looking at deals in Manchester and they're trying to get their head around it. <sighs> Cut out all that. You master your patch. So you live on, let's say you live on Old Marlebone Road, right? Master the... 20 streets within your area understand like okay old marlebone road this side this is the price top of the road the prices are less because it's the main road when you take a right and you go on to the marlebone road this properties aren't worth as much for xyz reasons you take another right and you go into this road and properties are more valuable because the school's right next door first master your entire area map it all out understand each street each area what's what's good what's value what is the demand is it one beds two beds three beds houses apartments map out your whole area become an expert on your area and touch base with all the local agents is that for educational reasons because what i would what uh, I would... knowledge knowledge is power i'll explain to you wh why you do that right now you've mapped out the entire area you know back to front what's good what's bad everything now you've created a network with all the agents. So there's going to be in your area five agents. Become mates with them, right? So you, now you know all the agents very well and you know what the values are in the area. So if he comes to, if the, one of the agents comes to you and says, right, I've got a property, top of Old Marleyburn Road. It's a one bedroom apartment. It's 650 grand. It's a great deal. Go for it. You like, no, 650 grand. And he's trying to tell you that, you know, there's a property halfway down Old Marlebone Road, which is 800 grand and that's a one bed. That's a great deal at 650. No, it's not a great deal at 650. That end of the road, the prices are 650, right? So that's why you need to have that knowledge of your area, be the master of your area, so that you understand the variances. You can't just get wool pull over, pull, pulled over your eyes. Yeah. So that's why you get the knowledge. Now, the other thing is then you just got to patiently sit and wait. Wait till you find a deal. Wait till you find something that has that intrinsic value. But to understand the value, you got to have the knowledge. Wait till you find that deal that's got the value. You got to be ready to jump for it then and go for it. So my counter on that, which I know some of my audience will ask here, what if they can't afford in their area? Because somewhere down like where I live in the South, uh, if someone's working a normal job, and they can't afford to buy somewhere mm. uh, because the prices are so much more. That's why they'll move up north. Mm -hmm. So what would be your counter to someone who can't, couldn't afford in Okay, so somebody who can't afford in their own area, then take the same logic and go somewhere else with it. Move, it. move that logic. Where you but if you can, stay within. It's cr anything in business, try and keep it simple and stupid. Yeah. As simple and stupid as you can. Master, if it's not your area, master a area. It could be any area, right? Master a area. Obviously, it's easy if it's your area because you already know it and you're walking it every single day, yeah. right? But if you can't master your area because you can't afford it, do that same thing somewhere else. And don't be afraid to put in cheeky offers. I do it all the time, right? Something's on the market. Let's say for argument's sake, they want a million quid for it. I'll go and put in an offer of 650, right? And the agent will laugh and, and uh, they're never going to go for it. I said, well, go, go, go give them the offer. What do you know? You're making it up. Yeah. Legally, an agent has got to give your offer, by the way, to the buyer. The, it, legally, no matter if your offer is one pound, he's got to go to the guy and say, your 10 million pound property, Zishan has just offered one pound for it. <laughs> but do they always? <laughs> That's the thing. If it's, look, if, you know, if you've got a good relationship with them, yeah. right, and you push them, yeah, and it's, you see, you never know. And always be ready to transact fast. So have, have your ducks in a row. Um, whether it's, you know, your own capital or you're, you're working with investors, whatever it is, have your money ready so that when you give that silly offer, but it's aggressive silly offer. So when I give a silly offer, it's, this is the offer and I'm going to complete an exchange within 14 days. Now that's, that, it, it makes the guy think, even though it's 650 on a million quid property, for argument's sake, or 700 on a million quid property, you're saying 30, 40% off. It's still basically saying like, in a way, it's like, you know, you've got something for sale, you're, you're selling a car and the car's worth 20 grand. What I try and emulate as much as possible is me bringing a briefcase full of cash, saying here's 12 grand for your car and you've got to you know, push that yeah. whole briefcase of cash back. No matter if it's 12 grand, it's eight grand less, it's yeah, still on the table really right now in the briefcase, in the cash. So that's what I try and emulate as much as I can when I'm making an offer. Yeah. The feeling of that money's there right now. Yeah. He's saying he's going to exchange and complete in 14 days. I get all my money and move on. So would you, so saying that, you know, being 
cash rich, you can make those offers, but throwing that on the flip side, so for some people watching this, they might need to use investors' money. Yeah. So are you big on, or what's your take on leverage of other people's money? Because what I just want to say here is that um, one is finding the investors. So people have got the knowledge, they've done the graft, as yeah. you said, they've done the foundational work, yeah. they understand property, but now they haven't got the cash. Well, they've got some capital, so what would you say, because a lot of people watching this are going to be going, I'm ready to do deals, I just haven't got the cash. So leverage of investors' money. Okay, now let, let, let's, let's take it this way. Um, someone's starting out, right? The first, now people around them are going to see, so let, let's use me as an example. I'm starting out, I'm doing that research all day long, I'm looking at deals, right? I'm speaking to friends, hey, what's going on? What are you doing tonight? Oh man, I've just, I'm just flooded right now, I'm looking at these deals. Um, so all my inner circle, the people around me, they're going to realize that this guy's onto something. He's doing something. That's where I've got to go first. Yeah. They're the first people that I've got to sell to, uh, you know, whether it's my parents, whether it's my siblings, whether it's my fa wider family, my close friends, they're the people because they're the ones who are seeing it. Right. So me coming to you, I'm starting out me coming to you say, hi, Aaron, I've got a great idea. You're going to be like, I don't know, man, who are you? I don't even know, like, what's your track record, right? And I'm like, no track record, I want to do it for the first time. And you're like, nah. Yeah. So the, I've got to go to my inner circle first, right? If you can win them, they're the people that will, they can actually see what you're doing and know it, right? And they're the people you can win over the e easiest. Yeah. Once you've done one deal, once you've done that first deal and you've done it successfully, I guarantee you the same inner circle, they'll want to give you more money, right? And they'll say, right, you know what? I'm bringing a few mates in, Education. right? Then you do that. Once you've done it two or three times, now you can, you can come and see me, you can go and see Aaron, you can go and see anybody. These are the first three deals I did. Bought this for X, spent X, sold it for X. This is the second one, bought it for X, spent X, it's rented at X. I've got a track record now. I can, I can speak to whoever I want. Yeah. Work's got going before. What I want to touch on here and just, um, I suppose, have my say on is, you've just said what I really believe in is that it takes time to build a network. Um, one thing I always get asked is, where do I find an investor? And the first thing I say is, have you ever done a deal? And they go, no, I haven't done a deal, but, but this deal's good. Yeah, but have you done a deal? No, I haven't. And they haven't, again, I ask the questions, have you asked friends, family? No, it's just too awkward. I don't want to ask that conversation. But yeah, it's so much harder to go to someone like yourself or me or someone they don't know and say, I need to borrow this. We haven't done anything. I don't know you. Well, see, the thing is that if you're, if you're blagging it, right, and you've not actually done the work and you're not actually prepared for it, your friends and family are the litmus test because they'll tell you straight away. Yeah. Like, listen, you're, you're fucking, you're waking up at one o'clock yeah. every afternoon. You're pissed every night. Yeah. You're not ready for this. So they keep you in check. They, when you're at the level where you're ready, your friends and family will give you the money. Although saying that, I do, uh, on the flip side, some people might say, I don't want to ruin relationships with friends because I, I, I proposed something to a friend and they said, look, our friendship's too good. I'm sure it'll go fine. I just, I just don't want to financially commit with you because I don't want to risk the relationship. Yeah. So on that, my take is still very much, as you just said, it's got to be the education first. You've got to learn how to do it. Then you've got to go and do it. And again, what does this tie into? It takes time. It's not done overnight. Yeah, you've got to build the relationships. Exactly. It just takes time. And people like, you know, your, your close friends and family, they'll, they'll see what you're doing. They'll sense your enthusiasm, you know, and yeah, one friend might say like, I don't invest in friends, but a family member might come forward, you, you know, and there's, there's a way of, you know, nature, there's a way of the world, for those people who believe in God, there's a way of God or whatever you want to call it, that people who strive for things, they get things. Yeah. Ways work out. When you're trying to find a way, a way works out. So, moving on to what's going to be a very interesting topic and i'm really excited to hear what you've got to say about this and how perhaps some of the people that you work with is that um working with investors and finding investors so a lot of people here are very interested in working with investors your circle uh, i mean how much do you use of investors leverage do you know do you use a lot of investors funds now are, you know are you able to very easily tap into because for for myself where i've spent time building really strong relationships and again time building them over years i'm able to access certain amounts of money now how much you know do you use of investors money have you got great relationships with investors because this is something people are really interested in hearing um see we technically we to date we haven't i haven't used investors money right. 
right? It's all been organic growth, but we do rely on off-plan sales models, right? right? Which you could say is, is yeah. using investors' money in a way, right? Um, but now I'm starting to, as we're looking to expand in different areas of the business even further, um, I'm looking to bring on outside investors in terms of bringing them on as equity partners yeah. in, into the deals before when we're buying them in the development process. We are now looking at that. Yeah. And within your circle of five, this is something that is uh, big for me. I know it's, it's, it's big for other people is who you're spending time with. And uh, so I'll, just give you, I'll just give you an example though. When I say I haven't had investors, but you know, uh, to date in developments that I've done myself, um, I've sold upwards of 150 million pounds in real estate. In, in my own developments that I've done myself, in developments that, um, you know, before I moved into development, uh, before I moved into investing, um, when I was just as a broker, we, you know, I've, I've done transactions in excess of probably seven, eight hundred million pounds, right? So, although I haven't taken investors on like that, but I have sold too. So, you have a network you could tap into essentially. Yeah. 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 So on your network, this is obviously something that people, I think people struggle with putting themselves in the right rooms. Uh, I was very blessed that I met the right people who invited me to the right network meetings. You know, I think if you if you want to get into property, go into property events, I don't personally think is the right place because everyone's looking for the same thing you are. <laughs> so um, I've never been to a property event. Yeah, I, th I, th I think where people get into property, they just think, Got, I've got to go to a property meeting. Whereas actually, in hindsight, you actually look back and you actually think, actually, I need to be going to art galleries. I need to be going to exhibitions. I need to be going to invite-only business meetings uh, to, to meet the right people. Are we talking about somebody who's looking to grow their business? They've, yeah, got, they've, got, they've done the first three deals and now they're looking to grow? Yeah, whether that's in business or in property, um, about being in the right room and circling yourself with people who are ahead of you or have done or have got the blueprint <laughs> you can follow. So your network of who you surround yourself with um, are people, you know, are there people you look up to and that you can tap into and learn from? You know, have you got a good circle of five, 10, 15? Um, I've got a good, good network of friends, um, some good people around me, um, always growing that network as well. Um, always, I like to meet people who, you know, where you get good People who are doing well in life or just, it doesn't have to be in business in any area. People who have that energy and motivation that when you meet them, you know, they, they uplift you. But I'll be honest, I've been guilty in this regard. Um, you know, I've been a very much a, a solopreneur in that way. Like I'm on like on a man on a mission and I've just been like at it myself. So I haven't like, you know, gone out there and done networking and, and met different people and used them to really augment my business. I, I haven't, yeah, I've, I've really just been pushing myself, but you know, it, it's, but I do have a good circle and I keep on, keep on increasing that, but it, it's very important to, to, to have, you know, that good circle around you. Yeah, and how big is, for your career and where you are now, in your developments, in your investing, how much is, your education been a big part of where you are now? Because I just want to say for me, um, the game changer for me is Audible. I'm not a huge reader, but I love Audible. I'm always listening anytime I can. I'm at the gym, traveling. Today I was listening um, a bit about Bitcoin, stuff like that. Just constantly trying to uh, you, you know, build on my education. So how much has education played a part? Or what do you do for education? It's, it's, pl it's played a huge part um, because <clears throat> it helped me Reading biographies uh, was was really what helped me, and it helped me understand that you know often the things that I thought was happening in my career were unique to me, the failures in particular that they're not, you know, and understanding the success journey of how 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 a career pans out and the failings you have and the successes you have and how you deal with those, so. Definitely huge, and I'm I'm always reading reading industry about what's happening in my industry, what's happening in the economy overall, what's happening in business. Um, I love podcasts. I listen to podcasts. I uh, I like the Tim Tim Ferriss show. So I'll choose. I'll I'll look at. So for example, I'll find someone that I like online, and then go check out. Is there a podcast by them? I love just to learn about 
successful people's mindsets and I'm not limited to just business whether it's sports whether it's entertainment whatever it is somebody who's reached the pinnacle of their industry what is their mindset what did they do to get there what differentiated them from you know them being in that top one percent from the other 99 percent what did they do differently um and and the pattern's the same it's like when they failed they didn't give up they tried harder yeah. the pattern's the same it's they worked the hardest they trained the hardest when everyone was when everyone would leave the office they would stay working when everyone would stop training they would keep training you know the pattern's the same so um, knowledge is so important and it's so important also to, to keep yourself motivated you know reading about somebody else's story it gives you inspiration um, so yeah the podcasts um, and then I'm always buying books um, whenever I sort of come across a recommendation whether it's an article or whether a friend tells me I immediately Amazon buy that book might not read it straight away might read it at a later date um, but always constantly reading about Is there a book that stuck out to you that you just really enjoyed? That Oh, yeah, I loved uh, Steve Jobs' biography by Walter Isaacson. Yeah. Oh, amazing. So note that down. Note yeah, that down. yeah. Shoe Dog, Shoe Dog. Nike founder, yeah. amazing book. Um, no Rules Rules, Mark Randolph, Netflix co-founder, amazing book. Recently came out, I think it's last year that I read that book. There's so many, it's so many. Though, but yeah. I love biographies because, you know, the, the intense business books that are like management books, I find them a bit boring, yeah. right? You get into it, it's like, write this down and write that down and get out your drawing board and chalk out the next 50 yeah. years of your life. And I'm like, oh, fuck's sake. That's a nice story. You know, like, yeah. like, you know Steve Jobs' book? I used to rush home to go and read it. Yeah. That's how into it I was. Led Brown, The Power of Purpose is... Is everything to do with someone wanting more out of their life who, you know, essentially have come from nothing, you know, that anything is possible, that this guy come from nothing um, and he's gone on to achieve, uh, you know, nothing but greatness in every form that he wanted to see success. And wow. um, and it was, it was just the, the graph, the constant... Is it like a biography? It, uh, or it's, is it... It's like a collaboration of all of his public speaking, sharing his story, and it's just, it's incredible. It's, it's old school, but it's, it's so I'll relevant. It. I'll order it now. Les, I mean, Les Brown is... It is, I might have it already. Yeah, The Power of Purpose. I promise you, you would not regret it. Really? And, and the other book, yeah, I, I Know What To Do, So Why Don't I Do It by Dr. Nick Hall. Um, yeah, yeah, you need to check it out. It's it. amazing. And anyone watching this needs to check it out. It's incredible. So I'll be, I'll be interested to hear what you think on that. Yeah. Listen to it while you're working out. It's a real motivator as well. It just. No, I'm, I'm ordering the book. His laugh is contagious as well. It's, it's, right, so, it's hilarious. So you, you did it. Okay, here you go. The Power of the... Just saying it. It's not going to come until May, though, for some reason. What I'll do is I'll, I'll share it with you. I'll share it with you. May was... Anyway, we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll order that, yeah. So, but then, uh, what, what was the actual question? So we were talking on education and how, how much it's been a big part. And obviously, you were just explaining that it's a huge part as well. And, and it's, there's another thing, right, which is something I've been thinking about recently, is um, what will prepare you for the first stage in your business right, um, doesn't prepare you for the second stage and the third and the fourth and the fifth, right? Every stage you've got to keep evolving, keep growing, keep learning. So for example, um, as, you, as you move up throughout your career, um, you, initially you're buying a house for let's say 150 grand, 200 grand. You're buying it from Mr. and Mrs. Jones down the road you're a bit clever, you get a good deal done, you're like, wow, amazing. As you move up the food chain, um, the people you're doing deals with, you're, you, you know, you're moving into the Premier League, yeah. right? So now it's not you're, not, you're not in the Sunday League anymore. You're not just knocking, you can't just turn up and have a knock about, you know, every Sunday I go in and I just score some goals and I'm great, right? Then the education, the preparation, it becomes more and more important. Because now you're in the Premier League. You're, it's all the stars. The guy you're buying a property from for £10 million, he's been around for ages, you know. He knows what he's doing. And he isn't in no urgency. That £10 million place he's selling is one piece of his portfolio, which is worth £100 million, right? It's not the one house they own and they need the money right now. He knows how to play the game, right? On the other end, that's one thing. Then the contracts you're dealing with, who are building that for you, they're Premier League as well. Then on the other end, the, the, the planners you're working with, everything, the architects, 
everyone is now on, on a different level. So you've got to constantly throughout your career to grow, you've got to up your skills, Pivot up your skills. Man. Yeah, yeah. You, you've got to keep growing as you go to different levels of business. You've got to keep improving your skill set because what made you successful from A to B is not making you successful from X to Z, yeah. right? You've got, you've got to change and adapt and, and improve your, your skill set. And, and it's been shown in, during COVID where a lot of businesses haven't moved and they're not around anymore. So yeah. that, that's just proven. One thing I want to get your take on, just as we wrap up, we're going to come to a finish now, is that uh, does Z have any alternative investments? Are you toying around with Bitcoin, bit crypto? Are you in any kind of investments? Gold, silver, you like anything? Art? Um, okay, no, I've got gold. Um, I've got, I've, over the years, I've constantly been buying gold. Right, don't know why, but I do. Right, physical, actual physical gold. Um, I've got a stock portfolio, right, uh, which is a little bit diverse. Um, last year, I plugged a load of money into travel, nice. right, uh, which has done well for me right now. I've not exited it yet. I think I'm just waiting for the next couple of months when travel opens up, hopefully, opens up, yeah. and that sentiment comes in. and it goes up again, then I'm gonna get out of that. No cryptos. I'm hearing about it all day long. All day. Every other conversation I have with the people I usually talk to, my property guys or my different tech guys, everyone's like, having you bought crypto, Dogecoin this, yeah. uh, the other one, Bitcoin this. I'm just like, I don't know, man. I need to look into it. I, 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 I need to research it. Um, and, you know, I, I don't know. I think don't know anything I, about it right now. I, I mean, I invest into Bitcoin, but I cost average. I, I, don't, I don't get excited about it. I don't know your take, just to, to finish off. Do you get emotionally attached to any of your investments? Because personally, I don't get emotionally attached, and I think that's why I make, I believe I make, sound decisions. So do you, yeah. do you get emotionally attached, or do you, is it all just business? No. Pro <coughs> within property, I get emotionally attached. Yeah. Because within property, um, my ethos is, my, 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 is that... In its essence, essence, property is about raising standards of living. That's what property actually is. It's about improving people's lives. So, for example, I'm, I'm developing a community overseas, which is um, the, it's about 800 odd apartments, 150,000 square foot commercial area, uh, 50 villas, and that's in phase one of the project. And I'm very emotionally attached to it. You know, two, two and a half years we've been in the planning of it, in the design of it. And that's because, like, the way I look at it is that my, I'm trying to improve people's lives, give them a better way of living. Yeah. That's why I'm, I get quite emotionally invested with properties, yeah. No. Totally agree with that. That's a, that's a very valid point. But, Z, I just want to wrap, wrap up. I can't thank you enough for sharing a huge amount of knowledge um, and joining me on my YouTube channel. So just to wrap up, Thank you very much again. Uh, can't wait to publish this and share this with the audience. So um, thank you very much. Cool, man. Cool, cheers.